every time a scooter is about to hit me almost 50% of the time it's there right so <laughs> <laughs> and how long were you in the corporate sector before you actually decided to take the plunge 10 years oh wow so leaving that paycheck would have been hard right it it was <laughs> how much was the paycheck at that time oh it was almost a crore first word that comes to mind when i say money chill uh first word that comes to mind when i say entrepreneurship our guest today is akash gupta akash co-founded zip electric with his wife in 2017 They featured on Shark Tank season 2 but were unaffordable even for the sharks. We speak with Akash about his journey, their multiple pivots and how they arrived at a point where the demand from his customers overpowers even his capacity of 15,000 riders. Enjoy this brand new episode of First Unicorn Chats. Uh, Agash, welcome to First Unicorn Chats. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Raj. Pleasure being here. No, pleasure is all mine. Uh, <laughs> you are one of the few stories in the ecosystem right now, uh, from a supply demand perspective. The conversation that we were having before, right? Yeah. Uh, who's genuinely being sought after, mm-hmm. and the way you are looking at your business today uh, is also in those um, in those parameters, right? You're seeing more demand than you have the capacity to supply at this point. Yeah. Uh, good problem to solve. Good problem to solve. <laughs> But let's take a take a few steps back, yes. right? Uh, how did you guys get into this industry? How did you arrive at the point that hey, this is the problem I want to solve mm. as a founder? So frankly, uh, this is not the problem that we started to solve with, right? As typical right. startups, you know, you land into the right problem. It was a journey for us. Uh, we had one thing very clear. When uh, when I was working in my corporate job, I was looking at a large opportunity which would attract me to leave everything off, right? Uh, and sustainability uh solving a larger problem right from the pollution side of things to the ev adoption to the esg and the problem of the drivers i think it it enticed me enough to leave my job and leave a good corporate salary and you know e shops and everything and start from there so but then the first version of the product was a very b2c product which is to solve mobility via evs right but when we were doing this rental model we realized that the hook that you have on the entire value chain is very limited it's more like a banking business or a leasing business you're not solving a large problem and around the same time a lot of these businesses were reaching out to us hey can you solve delivery for us the likes of zomato big basket and and the others so it was a big question and a pivotal moment for us within our office i still remember that meeting very vividly where half of the office was divided into no we should not do something new we are doing rentals we should continue to do that and then you know i had to say that hey we are a startup let's try there's no harm trying right uh, we will not jeopardize the current business we'll just build a new you know fledgling within us how long after your uh, after you started up did this pivotal moment come in 20 months so one half years Absolutely. So one and a half years, we were, and within those one and a half years, there were already two pivots done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Full pivots. These right. are like crazy pivots, right? So, so yeah, this one was our third pivot, which stayed on for the last three, three and a half years, and and we are now super confident that what we're doing is the right thing to do. Right. Yeah. So third time lucky, yeah. Huh? <laughs> third uh, time lucky. <laughs> for the audience, could you just explain what this delivery EV as a service model actually entails? Yeah. Sure. So frankly uh, if you look at uh, when you're ordering uh, food or grocery like you're waiting for your order there are a lot of players within this right so there's a business who has enabled the restaurant to get that order to you via a delivery executive who has a bike which might be his or someone else's right Correct. so too many broken pieces and for the business which is paying for this in a way or the customer so customer doesn't worry right whoever is delivering customer wants the product at the right time right that's the customer worry but for the business this guy whom they have employed the delivery executive it's a floating resource right mm-hmm. he might come today he might not come tomorrow right so so when you are ensuring that this customer gets the order every time on time how are you relying on a broken you know system. broken system where this guy is not even aligned to you what we are trying to do essentially is to organize all of this right so there are three key shifts which i talk about which are happening in our industry logistics one is you want these deliveries faster so the world is moving towards from e-commerce to fast commerce right so first thing is 
one day delivery, 30 minutes delivery. Gone are the days when you'll wait for your order for seven days, right? From Amazon or Mintra or anywhere. So that's first. The second is this unorganized bit has to now get organized via fleet operators who take the mantle that we will ensure that all things are delivered to you on time. Right. The third key shift is the shift from ICE to electric, which is for sustainability, for ESG, from government side, everywhere there's a push, right? So we essentially are right at the center of all these three key shifts, making it organized, making it electric and enabling fast commerce. But my follow up question to that mm. is that if you're a company like a Zepto or a Zomato or mm. any one of the delivery mm. platforms, right? Mm. Now you pride yourself on uh, your ability to deliver in time. Yes. Correct. Yes. Uh, so you would want to think mm. that as a Zomato or a Zepto, mm. I would want this function under my control. Sure. Right. Sure. If for example, a small example, True. right, is that I want my podcast to go out at a certain time. Yes. It gets very difficult for me to coordinate with freelance editors. True. I would rather have somebody in house. Mm. Right. Makes sense. So uh, why would a Zomato or, mm. a, um, or a Zepto mm. hive off such an important function. Mm. Of course, you're adding value, but I just want to kind of mm. dig deeper into what kind mm. of value you're adding and how sure. important you are. Sure. No, absolutely. And a brilliant question at that. See, while you would not want to rely on these freelancers for your, you know, main, uh, you know, pie of the cake, but let's say if those freelancers are customized to your requirement, they're built and trained to deliver for you, Mm -hmm. at the time when you want them, not for the entire day, right? So your deliveries, like talk about Zomato, they're more on the weekends, they're more in the nights or during the lunchtime. What is that freelancer doing? What, what is that in-house resource doing during the rest of the day? He's wasting. What my platform is doing is enabling him in the morning also to get to do something else, to do something in the evening also, which you might not have the access or at, at the moment, so I'm utilizing this asset much better than what you could have done on your own. Right. And at the same time, I am ensuring that you don't have to pay me for those hours when you don't have to use them. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm bringing your cost down in that way. I'm getting the freelancer for you. I'm getting the bike for you. I'm ensuring that he's up and running when you want them in the numbers that you want them. Right. And that assurance is what was the issue earlier, which nobody had in right. this industry. Two years back when we started, they were all averse. No, we do not want to outsource. This is our core piece. Hmm. Now that we take about 15 to 20% of their supply in a city, hmm. now they're thinking this supply is doing well. Why? Why this supply is doing well for them? Then their own supply is because this supply is always available. Because the bike is always with me. Right. A delivery guy will keep going and coming. Because this guy cannot ride forever 12 hours. Right? It's, it's inhuman. For a person to drive 12 hours every day, right? It's a six month, eight month max in a life that you can ride for 12 hours in heat, in rain, you know, in sun, in winter and still stay up and standing. So we know that this guy will keep going. But if I have the bike in my control, which is electric, I keep bringing new people on, which is the 50 million unemployed people in this age bracket, which is a queue. They come on my platform, they get trained and they're ready to deliver for you at the same time every day. So I'm like the churn management platform. Right. No, this is uh, this is quite brilliant as well because um, as you would think, right, this mm. is uh, actually, you know, higher level thinking. Even apparently the management was thinking that way, right? Mm. That, hey, this is such an important functionality. Mm. I can't, I can't farm it out. Yes. Until they did. Yes. And they also did it from a position of, uh, um, of kind of compromise as well because uh, they were growing, they needed to get profitable, they needed to cut costs, they needed to come Precisely. to all of those points, right? True. Uh, and that's how you guys got there. Correct. Uh, I'll take one more step back yes. before where you guys are. Mm -hmm. uh, you were on Shark Tank. Oh, yes. <laughs> how was that experience? Oh, it was, uh, it was something that I really enjoyed, to be very frank, if you ask me today. Right? Why? Because to be on Shark Tank was, was like a lot of Shark Tanks that we have seen during our time when, when I was not an entrepreneur, I used to watch a lot of US Shark Tank, right? right. Me and my co-founder Rashi, right? We used to watch it quite a lot. And when this opportunity came forward, we said that, why not? Let's go and experience it and we'll have our own story. So I really thoroughly enjoyed that experience. Frankly, every pitch that I have given, I was talking to an entrepreneur yesterday only. He said that uh, a lot of no's are coming, right? Hmm. Kya karna hai? 
मैंने कहा यार नो में ही टिपिकली इज द आंसर एवरी नो हैज द राइट आंसर फॉर यू टू ट्वीक समथिंग इन योर स्ट्रैटेजी टू गेट टू द राइट येस so i love those experiences i think i have now become the that rock which which loves to hear no because i know that this no i'll find some some answer there yeah that's a that's a very valid point but sometimes especially in the market that we guys are in right now right uh, you have to take every no with a pinch of salt as well yes. because yes. Uh, otherwise you try to get in a, a warped reality True. because there was a time in 2021 even if you were doing something which was burning cash and all of that mm. right you were still making uh, you still picking up funding yeah. right yeah. so does that make you think that you were doing the right mm. things all along mm. no you weren't because you were still sure. burning for example absolutely. to acquire a customer absolutely now you might mm. be doing it much more efficiently mm. but just because you're not getting funding mm. you think you have to make that change mm. so i think it's a uh, i know That's you have to point. you have to actually have that uh, you know groundedness about you absolutely. at that point in time that look uh, I'm going to go alone on this decision because I know this is the right one. No, but frankly, my point is not that you know that no, a blunt no, hmm. is is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm saying that no with the right feedback, feedback is what you need to really hear. Right. And if you feel obviously you cannot keep changing your business model with every pitch, but at least if you feel in your deep inside that yes, this this feedback can have a better impact on my business, you need to pick that as a as an entrepreneur. Got it. I think uh, the feedback that you got was uh, hmm. you marketing के लिए आए थे marketing हो गई ठीक है आपको नहीं चाहिए हमारे पैसे correct so so what was your what when you heard that you like हाँ ये था और what what are you thinking no essentially frankly I am I am a crazy marketer I love to do that and that is why I am running my own podcast yeah. <laughs> and bunch of things which people say why is he doing that but see I am enjoying I am putting a very little effort into my daily routine into this and I think uh, while our fundraising was done when we had gone on shark tank yes mm. that's true but we had very clearly stated that the round is done mm. but we can still take you in but when we realized that i think the the ticket size that we were at at that point is not the right shark tank ticket size right 200 crores was one of the off valuations for them at that time right Correct. they typically do an early stage and mm. i would also do the same if i mm. um, you know i'm sitting there <laughs> uh, so which is which is reality but yeah i think uh, uh, मार्केटिंग तो हो ही गई लेट मी गेट 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 लिटल बिट बॉट डेटा ऑन दैट राइट नंबर ऑफ कस्टमर्स यू साइन अप आफ्टर शॉर्ट टाइम नो फ्रेंकली वी नेवर हैड दैट प्रॉब्लम इवन नाउ वी डू नॉट वी आर अ बी टू बी कंपनी ऑल द कस्टमर्स दैट वी वांट टू ऑन बोर्ड आर ऑलरेडी वर्किंग विद अस सो ऑल ऑफ योर बिगर नेम्स एवरीवन दे वर ऑलरेडी देयर बिफोर बिफोर शॉर्ट टाइम इज वेल और डिड समबडी डिड वाज देयर अ शॉर्ट टाइम इफेक्ट दैट्स व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू आस्क नॉट एसेंशियली फॉर अस आवर बिजनेस यू नो डिड डिड have any impact from that lens because right. because uh, we were already there i think people knew zip as a green scooter as you would see right so that was already visible and we were not national so if someone from pune would ask us to deliver we would anyways not go there because we are a depth business no that uh, that makes a lot of sense yeah and uh, i think you guys have done a great job with your marketing as well right if i may just take a slide of course because uh, Every time a scooter is about to hit me, almost fifty percent of the time it's zip, right? So <laughs> for for no fault of anybody, it's just the traffic is really bad now. <laughs> I know, I know, it is. But I would like to talk about you know this industry that uh, that you guys are in now, yeah. right? Because uh, the kind of opportunities that are going to come up here, hmm. uh, I think don't get as much attention that as they should, hmm. right? Uh, there's a lot of hype around generative AI, hmm. right? Uh, not as much about EV and clean energy as there yeah. should be yeah right if i'm a 20 21 year old engineer graduate mm. coming out mm. right what can you tell me about the ev industry that mm. would make me want to commit a 10 year career say mm. into this industry no frankly i don't have to tell you anything because now these guys are smart enough to know which are the new sunrise industries right mm. ev is definitely a sunrise industry anywhere when you enter you know if you are entering with a mindset that i want to build in this in this industry for long typically each industry would take 10 to 20 years right when this a new sunrise industry right. like telecom 20 years uh internet 20 years right e-commerce been building since 94 from amazon days right so yeah so so if you want to play the long game ev is the right bet for you to do too many things right now which are still out in the open for people to address uh if you talk about ai it might be a 
little smallish industry from that lens you don't know right because mm. it might rise and it might go you've seen so many of web 3s and you know these evolutions which have come or cryptos right which were at the peak but then you know you don't know the future yet right but this is a this is a tectonic shift which has to happen for the right reasons obviously i won't say that the the chemistries or the technologies would remain the same they might evolve we might want to go more on the renewable side we want to go a lot more on the hydrogen side but that's the part of the ev evolution which has to happen because right. the resources are you know of that nature today we don't have enough fuel for serving us for donkey's years right correct so i think uh, a lot of what you've spoken of at this point right uh, is the opportunity that the common masses have been ma- are being made aware of yes. right that ev is the future yeah, yeah. Uh, all the you know uh, great things are going to happen are, mm. are going to be there True. right tesla and and True. what not my question is that if there is a layman outside right yeah. uh, who knows only this much sure. that ev is going to be the next best thing sure. right uh, they can't invest in you you're a private mm. company mm. Uh, what should a common man do mm. right at this point in time to mm. actually be part of this revolution where they can monetarily let's say gain from it sure so i think uh, they should watch this podcast for sure <laughs> <laughs> or they can ride a car or a scooter if they are pure layman right they should at least uh, feel proud when when they are you know traveling in in an electric bus or an electric car or an electric scooter or you know getting things delivered by a zip they should feel a little bit of proud in in saving a little bit of carbon that they are right and and yeah i think uh, they should watch the future building you think uh, investing let's say in uh, in you know even public companies which are going very deep on on this front tata motors for yeah. example yeah. do you think that's one avenue for uh, basically becoming participative in that uh, why sector why not so frankly um, you know tata motors has grown really from 60 yeah. to 600 right and and a lot of it what i hear is on the back of evs and stuff like that yeah. right um, so yeah i think uh, if if you are the public market guy, public markets guy you need to research those energy stocks those companies which are getting into green energy clean energy electric uh, you know power train guys uh, motor guys controller guys lot of guys are going to come into uh, the the mainstream right right uh, those are there or there are so many now platforms which are syndicates which are creating those pools of money where even a layman can invest why angel syndicates on 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 an angel co or a vcats or you know a wfc or a ipv right so figure out those ev opportunities in these channels right. and you can still participate in startups also no very uh, very cool uh, you're also now you know uh, one of the few folks like i uh, mentioned in the beginning of the podcast right uh, who's still getting a lot of attention even in a funding winter environment mm-hmm. uh, touch wood on that <laughs> there's your wood uh, yeah. my question is that do you think and and this is a bit of a pointed question right because okay. uh, coming through let's say 2020 yeah. right i was there when uh, when you know at tech companies were getting all of that all of that money i was a, mm. i was a banker i was i was a banker trying to sell an tech company yeah. which was profitable yeah but i couldn't it was having a hard time being sold mm. because uh, it wasn't a it wasn't one on a massive growth trajectory mm. right mm. and at that point in time you know at tech was the best thing since sliced bread true right true. that wave kind of mm. tapered and how true right my question to you is that right now the kind of demand that even uh, there is even in a dry funding environment for ev yeah do you think it's a uh, it's a momentary spike mm-hmm. given that everything else is looking less attractive mm-hmm. or do you think it's here to stay no i think it is here to stay for for the right reasons right because while i know that for the f- last 5 years when i have pitched this business to a lot of guys they could not you know fathom that ev would be so big Mm. right or it will become a real um, you know life changer uh, they were watching they were waiting they were kind of analyzing but now that it is getting that mainstream attention for the right reasons the sales are happening for the new companies who've launched or uh, you know there's a lot of focus rightly said from the government right in multiple things you can see these things now happening in the real world so now i hear uh from a lot of those people who i had spoken to in the past that either we are in their entire portfolio or is there a way to join that you know right. journey right but at least it's not a euphoria i would never get into any euphoria because i have seen those days when i have pitched multiple guys and and i think those 
those those ethos are built that just focus on building the business right. focus on solving the right problem focus on profitability focus on the team and rest or the things will come along as they have to very interesting and how long were you in the corporate sector before you actually decided to take the plunge 10 years oh wow yeah so leaving that paycheck would have been hard right it it was <laughs> how much was the paycheck at that time oh it was almost a crore wow yeah. so what was that feeling like uh, leaving that and uh, basically it's not and this is something i was uh, explaining to somebody who had come right before this right mm. and we were having this conversation mm. so i was like look it's not just about being able to give up the paycheck yeah it's about being able to say that look i've given up the paycheck and the mm. savings which i have mm. i'm going to assume i'm putting it on fire by absolutely uh, doing that right absolutely last segment right uh, first word that comes to mind when i say money chill okay intoxication no 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 i'm second, second word is intoxication <laughs> 